next set of ghost towns uh, are all in the northeast corner of Kansas. And the, you know, histories of these are a little different than the ones I just previously went to that are more in the southern part of Kansas. And they're a little bit older. Uh, some of them, just there was more that people got here earlier than they got out to the western part of Kansas. And um, a lot of them had histories um, at this, in the Civil War. Uh, interested to check out a different part of the state and also kind of find out a little bit of history of why the towns um, eventually kind of almost disappeared. Starting this day in the unincorporated town of Arrington, Kansas. Um, the the most interesting part about this town or former town is that uh, it got very popular because of some mineral springs. And you know, years ago people would come to these springs and they thought they had special, you know, healing powers and things like that. And then there was a spring here in Arrington that people that, that the word got out that. Uh, that it was a particularly terrific spring for people to to come and and bathe in and and just you know to drink and to get themselves healed of all their diseases. So uh, the town was never big, but they had a lot of tourism from about the 1880s until the early 1900s, and then a fire burned most of the town down and uh, kind of never recovered. And then it is uh, there's a few things left. It's only really some houses. Um, there's obviously a few things left that are decaying, and and uh, but but it's an interesting little town to get our day started. Kinnikuk, while always very small, was actually very busy and uh, very important because it was actually a stop on the original Pony Express. It was the first stop in Kansas as you were heading west. Uh, and actually, this area right here was um, where three different trails met at one place. And so thousands of people would come through here. They had hotels, they had all kinds of businesses to support that. This was you know, way back in the 1850s and 1860s. And um, it can kind of after the Civil War, the, the busyness kind of stopped, the Pony Express stopped. It was a short-lived yet interesting experiment uh, with the mail. And, uh, but, but there's now just a couple houses. There's this historical marker, which has a lot of inf interesting information on it. And, um, but interesting to think about all the people that used to come to this little spot and as they were trying to figure out where to go and um, how to get there. Pedonia is, as we're starting to get to the very northeast part of Kansas, uh, this, this area was uh, significant because there were a lot of free state uh, people in this area, and then there were a lot of people that were 
um, pro-slavery. And so uh, there were battles all around in this area. And Padonia was one of three towns that were started around the same time, but the only one that kind of survived of any significance. And it's a little bit left here, but um, they battled fellow towns and uh, maybe people from Missouri that were pro-slavery back and forth, even before the Civil War and then after the Civil War. So, um, so there were some significant probably lives lost here and thus we're in the cemetery of Pannonia. And if you look around, um, it's pretty interesting because much older, especially than some of the previous ghost towns in the southern part of the state, you see some uh, 1700s in terms of the people when people were born. Um, Padonia has got a railroad that goes still right through the town here and quite a bit of, it looks like agricultural uh, business going on. So a couple interesting buildings. So definitely glad I was able to, to drive through Padonia and, and check it out. I'm walking down the main street of White Cloud, and this is still an incorporated town. Uh, about 150 or so people. Used to be 10 times that large. And you can see why, it's right on the Missouri River. And this was a place where, um, as people were coming west, it was one of the, the last places of, uh, called sophistication until you got to the Wild West. So White Cloud was a, kind of a destination place. and. Uh, you can see all the old buildings are still here. Um, it is a very cool place to check out. A lot of these towns I go to are not really worth visiting unless you're really into things. Uh, but this is one you want to come see. This is called the Four State Lookout at um, White Cloud. And that's, so you, you can see Kansas, you can see Missouri, you can see Nebraska, which is in not far here. And then down the way is Iowa. And so from this area, you can see four different states, not stand on four different states at the same time, but you can actually see four states. It's kind of a unique attraction at White Cloud. <laughs> 